Hello, my name is James Hilliard. I'm the inventor of the XNubi Composites. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use our XNubi Starter Kit to create aluminum air batteries. Uh, they can be used in any number of circumstances. You can use them to light a 6 volt light, a 9 volt fan, a 12 volt fan. You can use them with a car phone charger and you can use them to power very very powerful LED floodlights that are used on off-road vehicles. Uh, they can also be used for any application between 0.6 to 12 volts with 10 of the cathodes. More cathodes, more volts. Your kit's going to come with 10 of these. You'll have 11 alligator clips and you will be supplied with um, sodium chloride, calcium chloride, just salt, and sodium hydroxide with clear instructions on how to create this solution. You will find that a multimeter is helpful. You will need to provide your aluminum foil or aluminum can clippings, and you will need to provide containers. Uh, any type of container is going to work um, as long as it can stand up to this. Paper cups are not recommended. The first step is we're going to set up our cup. Take our aluminum foil, push it down into the cup, and kind of fold that aluminum foil up over the edge of the cup. And we'll do that with each one of them. All right, now after we've got our aluminum foil ready and those, we can take our paper towel. We'll take a cathode, um, as you can see right here, and we're going to leave the tip of it out and roll the paper towel over it, leaving this stuff at the bottom. You can even fluff it up some into the side of the cathode. Flip it over into the side of the cathode like this, and then just drop it down into the cup like that. The goal, what you want, you do not want black, the black cathode touching the aluminum. You want it separated by paper towel entirely. Do not allow the cathode to touch the aluminum. To get these to fit with alligator clips, you may end up needing to actually file them down some. I've got larger alligator clips. You can order these separate from the starter kit. Now the purpose of, well, the purpose of leaving a little bit of excess cathode sticking out is when you connect an alligator clip to, well, to the cathode, then you don't want the paper towel to touch this. It will cause corrosion faster. Now we've got our cups ready and our cathodes ready, we can begin adding electrolytes. Once you add electrolytes, they don't flip over as easy. I always use an extra cup. It makes pouring the electrolytes easier. 
um, in your instructions, you're going to be explained what the pH level of these chemicals will be. Um, one level is relatively safe. They say that alkaline water that people drink is around 11, per, or 11 um, on a pH scale. Um, this is a safe electrolyte. Please be very careful when you do all of this. Any of it can be very deadly. Once you get some water in these things, some electrolyte, they don't flip over and fall over. What we're going to be doing is connecting these each one of these would be considered a battery cell and we're going to be connecting these battery cells into what's called a series configuration where we get to add up the voltages as we connect them. Each one of these is going to produce about 1.2 volts with this electrolyte. If we didn't have any sodium hydroxide in the electrolyte at all, then it would produce around 0.64 to 0.7 volts and a surprising amount of power for just salt water. This does have a little bit of sodium hydroxide in it and will create a powerful battery. But it is a low enough pH to where there is not a very, very high amount of corrosion, early corrosion of the aluminum because of the electrolyte. Um, if the electrolyte had a higher, P, higher pH than 11, you would see hydrogen begin to develop on the aluminum and it would bubble and corrode away. But it would also produce electricity much faster and much greater rates than what we're going to do here. Now the cathode, the black, the ex nubi cathode is your red, is your plus on the battery. The aluminum is your negative. So now we'll start connecting them. I'm going to use these on each one of cathodes. They can't be allowed to conductively touch each other. This aluminum can't touch this aluminum. Otherwise it creates a short or puts the batteries in what's called parallel. So you have to keep them separated and you'll see here in a second when we start going to connect them uh, that it's a good idea to have them all turn in the same way, especially if you're doing a series configuration. So we'll turn them Our alligator clips, and we connect aluminum over to the cathode. Now hopefully we've got a full 12 volts. As long as we don't have any shorts, we should. So we'll connect to the red. We'll connect to the black. And we've got well over 12 volts. 
as you can see it's 15 15 volts now might as well start at the top and work our way down Here is our floodlight. We'll get red connected. We'll get black connected. And you can see it's full force. And it will burn this bright until that aluminum corrode my camera it died last night right about the time that i started filming these floodlight being lit up by the batteries uh, i left the floodlight on for about an hour after the camera died uh, last night and then i disconnected it and allowed the battery to sit overnight as you can see the voltage across the battery has dropped there is an explanation for this, and it makes sense. The pH of these solutions has dropped. The sodium hydroxide of the original solution has reacted with the aluminum and therefore lowered the pH of the solutions. This one is just, well, getting close to 10 on the pH scale that one's just over 10 on the pH scale the, uh, the initial solution is actually oops, it is actually an 11.2 pH so this is all very safe water now to increase the voltage what we can do is bring the pH up. Now we're not gonna get back to the full 11.2 because we're mixing with a lower pH. But we will increase the amount of active area of aluminum because we're adding more electrolyte. You can see the voltage is starting to recover. So it actually saves the aluminum when it does that. Uh, by dropping in pH, by using this lower powered uh, solution here. Again, you will have instructions on how to create the low power solution, which is we're using here, and a very high power solution that has a higher pH. So now we're recovering on our battery here. You can see that it, it's going to work great on the floodlight. And And then for six volts, which is this guy, I think the center is red. We need to connect somewhere over here. You can see at six volts, you leave out a few cells. You could use a multimeter to figure out where your voltage is. Um, this would be 1.2, 2.4 at fully running, but again, our pH is low. Here is a car battery charger. I'm not gonna, I can't remember which direction they go. Yeah. So that's black, that's red, that's positive, that's negative. 
negative goes over to the aluminum, red goes over to the cathode, and you can see the charger is on. And it is charging.